From the Metal Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground, I'm Josh Williams. I'm Jeff Rappaport. And I'm Brian Bali. Hey, so this week, let's, uh, I don't think anybody should do any heavy lifting for our guests. Let's no, I think Brian broke his balls last <laughs> week with those other guys. That, them dirty clam fight dudes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's just see if I snap my fingers if the guests will come out. <laughs> come on, move it. Sorry, Alex. You alright, buddy? Oh. Slide on down. All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. <coughs> we just got back from Sing Sing. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we dug our way out with a spoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Alex and John. Say hi. You guys want to do formal introductions? Hello. They might know these guys from uh, somewhere. Agoraphobia. Uh, Incantation. Anything else? Yeah, Sophie of Grief, Macrosian, Perversaraf, Namtaru, a few bands, a few bands. What's it for me? Gorephobia for like a half a second. <laughs> Just a half a second? How'd that half a second work out for you? It was actually two half a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1990 and again in what? 2000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2000. So I'd closer to your friend Alex. You want to hurt Yeah, let's all get yeah. close. You got to get, bring it closer to your Oh, me too. Yeah. Jeffrey, got a lot in the air. Why don't you start the official line of questioning? Yeah. 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 There you go. There's your notes. All right. Would you consider, would you guys consider yourselves um, underground legends? No. You uh, are. <laughs> no. I, I I don't know. It's kind of uncomfortable that somebody considers you that, but it's, it's that's for somebody that, else to decide. Yeah. I mean, it's flattering that people, you know, inspired by your music and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. I'm just me doing what I do and. That's it, you know. When you go to metal shows, a lot of people recognize you though and come over to you and ask you for stuff. And Unfortunately, sometimes, yeah. You don't like, you don't <laughs> like that? <laughs> well, I don't mind it, but, you know, sometimes you get the uh, strange people once in a while. But, I, you know, I always try to take the time to talk to people and stuff like that and, you know, answer their questions and sign their stuff. What's the strangest uh, encounter you've had? Uh, I was in Mexico City. I was doing a short tour with uh, Dismember and Grave and... The I think it was the grave guys who was telling me not to go out in the audience, and uh, so I was like, ah, I'll fine, this member was playing, and I go up on the second part of the venue, and this guy, just, I hear incantation, and this guy just grabs, comes up behind me and starts punching me. And, what? what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's like, incantation, and I just grabbed him and threw him, and luckily our road crew was there, and these guys were these big Mexican guys, and, <laughs> and threw him out, and... You know, I was, just, you know, so then I get backstage after everybody's are all laughing at me. Oh, you know, we told you not to go out there. You know, <laughs> was that a friendly greeting? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, like, hey, they have weird ways of telling, you know, letting you know how much they. Oh, like I love you. Music. Let me punch you in the balls. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you get stuff like you know they come up to you and their English is really bad and they're trying to get through me. They're like, ah, oh, it's just Satan. Oh, just uh, ask me. I'm like, yeah, rock and roll. You know. Yeah. You know. Heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. what, what would you say um, is, in, in today's scene, I mean, today's scene is much different from the old scene, what would you say the most positive thing of today's scene is? Well, I think that there's a younger audience now that uh, if it wasn't for the younger audience, we wouldn't have people to play for, really, because uh, there's these kids that are looking for the roots of heavy metal. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I come from the, the death metal scene, but I'm really just a rock and roll heavy metal guy, and that's where I... Sure. Um, but, you know, they, they look for the roots in music, and I think that they, you know, they, they look into, you know, 70s rock and early heavy metal bands and the early death metal, thrash metal bands, and because and, they're looking for the real stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, Excuse luckily me. that there's these 21-year-olds that are into all the early stuff that we all did and the early heavy metal bands, and I think, um, you know, it's just, and then you still have people that are our age that are still into it, and it's just things have grown a lot, I think. Um, the only problem I, I see is that there's, you know, there's more clones than there ever was. I mean, there's like, you know, in the 80s, even though you had your clones and things like that, there's always people that, you know. Everybody would jump on a trend back then, too. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, people, everybody. More, more bands, there was more people with, in, you know, were individuals and they had more of identity, I think. Um, you know, it's like, well, if you heard this band, you know it was them. And, you know, nowadays it's like they all have the same formula. Mm, but, you know, yeah. You know, they're, they're like, cop they're copies of copies, you know, it's like. Yeah, and then eventually it it, it, uh, it degrades the the quality. You know, it's almost like it you take a cassette down. Well, it's almost like a 
the quality of music, I'm not saying sound or production wise, but sure. like you take a cassette tape and just try to think of the analogy, you take the cassette tape and you make a dumb copy, and then you dumb copy from that copy, and then that, mm -hmm. that copy, and that copy. Right. And it waters down to creativity sure. and all that. You know what I'm saying? So it just gets rehashed and it's just in the end it might have great production, but there's no like the so like of it. Bands are, that you know, like so too as well. The younger bands are really it's kinda of stale. Like, you know. What do you think like uh, you know, a lot of people a lot of the old school guys give a lot of shit to the like the, the like the new school of thrash bands like Bonded by Blood and Warbringer and those bands. What do you what do you think about bands? Necromantheon. I like them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly I, I really haven't even heard some of those bands and but do you object? Do you object? I mean, some people seem like they take it. They don't like it that they're trying to sound like the old bands. They think that it's not right because they weren't there and all that. Do you I think like that's. That? I think that's fine if they're carrying on a tradition. Yeah, I in mean, a way, you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of bands will mimic Black Sabbath, but it's not the fucking seventies anymore. Right. But if if nobody does that, then it's just going to get forgotten. It's going to be left in the background. But you have to do it in a tasteful way, representing what came before you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, in the last interview. Um, when you guys said something about uh, it's not the condition of your shoes, it's who you're stepping on, or who you're standing on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, mm -hmm. yeah. you're standing on the shoulders of sure. giants, so you have to respect that and keep it, keep the fires burning. But it's got to be, you know, it's got to be uh, a, a certain way, you know, yeah. for lack of a better phrase. You know? Yeah, there's a difference between bands being influenced by other bands and then bands just kind of being copycats. Right, you know, right. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they no, make you it can't go blatantly sure. rip shit off. Yeah, but I, if you I want to see... take that style and play in that style that this person or this band created, or several bands, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm sorry, I don't mean to. You know, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's an amalgamation, man. You know what I mean? And the stuff that that I play is influenced by a lot of things, you know, sure. diverse, a lot of background, going from '70s hard rock to, you know, and even psychedelic shit to, you know, the most extreme metal bands, you know. So, mm -hmm. me too. Now, <laughs> now, do you find yourself a lot less gassy now that you stop drinking? <laughs> um, yeah, less gassy. Absolutely. Well, because you've been burping over there. Less <laughs> 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 gassy. I don't annoy people. It depends on what. Yeah, yeah. Do, that's for sure. What are you trying to say? I'm annoying people. No, no, not <laughs> me. <laughs> now, you, uh, you said you quit drinking a while ago. No, yeah, was there a specific reason? Ago. I yeah, it's just out of control, you know. It's just uh, he, he's better off, man. Yeah, yeah. He was a it wild just came man. to the point where it's like, you know what? I uh, can't do this no more. You know, I mean, you, when you when you start becoming uh, more destructive than creative, then right, and then you start living for that uh, rather than the music or whatever. Then it's just, yeah, it's too much. You know? you, I don't knock anybody that parties and. This beer's hoppy, but it's free, so I don't, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know what's best for me. I don't know what's best for anybody else. Sure. Was it hard to stop? I don't know. No? Just, yeah. No so urgency? what I had to do? No. It's harder no. to quit smoking, huh? Yeah, I was tougher. I quit smoking. That is harder. I, I, did, I did that, though. So. That was even harder, actually. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. And, then, you know, like I said, I'm on, I'm on the road with a bunch of maniacs. Especially when you have the Europeans that are, like, your road crew, and they're drinking at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know, so someone's got to drive the bus. Yeah, usually the Polish guys. You know, yeah. the Polish <laughs> guys drive the bus. Yeah, the <laughs> alcohol don't affect them. Yeah, uh, it's like holy water. Yeah. They drink the vodka, and it's holy water. And we we talked about holy water about the new scene. Uh, what about back in the day? What do you think? Uh, what are we missing today from that that was present in the old scene? Uh, well, I just think that there was just you know all the pioneering was going on back then. And it, it, you know, speaking for me, coming from the early death metal scene. When there was only, you know, a handful of this, like over here, you know, I was like, agoraphobia, immolation, incantation, mortician, <laughs> deceased, virgin, well, yeah, exorcist, you know, and then you had the <coughs> European bands, and right. it was kind of like our close little, you know, uh, scene or you know, the secret mm -hmm. and whatnot, and uh, you know, we were all kind of inspiring each other. I think at the same time, it was very exciting because he, you know, one guy would write a new song, and, and you know, we'd hear. We'd Inhalation would do, or vice versa, and, oh, you know, and it's just very inspiring, and, and uh, you know, I don't think that the, I hate, I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't think there'll ever be a time in music, because I seen the gradual, I seen from hard rock to, to heavy metal to, to thrash metal, and, you know, I come also, I you know, I grew up with a lot of hardcore punk and stuff like that, so, you know, um, I just don't see the perfect slaughter uni uniqueness, you <laughs> yeah. know, that there was back then, and, and the, uh, like I said earlier. Really Everybody like dresses a certain way. They all got their 
you know, it's like these new bands, they'll get their hair parted on the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice emo guys. That's a good look. They got their nice little breakdown in the middle, and, you know, it's just... Breakdown. Where the, where, what happened to being an individual and just doing what, you know, not care, you know, like... Right. You know, we, we had the attitude that we didn't care what anybody else think. We, we played the music that we wanted to hear, and, you know, even for Gore Foley starting out in Philly in the 80s, we were laughed at by a lot, a lot of thrash metal bands. The only band that, um, <clears throat> you know, that really uh, respected us was Anvil Bitch. Oh, know? yeah. And the rest of the bands kind of were like, oh, it's just crap, you know? But we didn't care, you know? We, we Fuck did, that. We did what we wanted to do. Sure. You know? Now, with, with Gorophobia, you guys had like a 15-year break in there. Yeah. Was there a point, um, I was wondering if, there, if anything had happened to you guys it, during that break... You know, you, the band still kind of gained notoriety. Was there a point where you're sitting there, like you hadn't actually been part of the band or done anything, and, and you saw something happen specifically, and you thought, well, maybe we should get back and see what happens? It again. was just basically my uh, friendship that I rekindled with uh, Chris Gamble, who was basically started the band. Me and him was basically his agoraphobia, the two mm -hmm. of us, and uh, you know, we just kind of rekindled our friendship after years, and uh, you know, it just went from there, and we were just like, hey, let's. You know, just try writing some stuff and jam together. And uh, I think there was a lot of unfinished bit business between the both of us. Um, unfortunately, we were younger then, and sure, stupid things happen. And you know, we were set to record our debut album in '91 in Sweden, actually, at Relapse Records. Oh yeah. And you know, there was this turmoil in the band, and you know, we split up. So <clears throat> you know, it was just basically unfinished business, and you know, it's like we were enjoying each other's company a lot more, and inspired to do it. And, it was just the right time to do things, you know. So you guys needed that time apart to maybe mature. Yeah, absolutely. individually. Yeah, no absolutely. doubt about that. We also you probably see because I see um, like I because of Facebook and stuff. I got together a lot of my friends and people from high school and stuff that I've seen mm -hmm. in a million years. And as you get older, from like your twenties into your forties, it's like the groups are gone. It's not mm -hmm. like the the jocks and like the metalheads mm -hmm. and like the nerds. Like now, you all have that common bond that you like. You're all in your 40s. Now it's all weird. You're to school together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everybody, now everybody can hang out. You find that too? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I actually uh, found some old friends, you know, from Facebook, actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's just funny. Like, some of them that were into metal that, you know, are not into it anymore. And, right. Oh, are you not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like, they're that. like, oh, yeah. nasty Either you're in metal or you're not. not. Just, you know, nasty there's a whiplash still about yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'll, be, you know. I'll be dead in the grave and I'll still be in the metal dude. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and maybe I'll have a metal coffin or something yeah, yeah. I don't understand that either people say they're not into it anymore did you guys turn into Yelpies they what weren't happened? into it to begin with yeah because what happened to all the people your age because there should be all these older people that are into metal and there's not I think they are but, uh, but that it, it takes a lot more for guys our age to get them out of the house like we yeah, just, we did we did a uh, that's true I helped book a, the we show for families stuff. and things like that too now yeah so life because change people grow up can. in life and life intrudes you know, but when you want doesn't to, mean you, you, you stop being to. a fan of the thing and you know what I mean it's for for what metal is it's epic it's it's something that's that, that transcends fucking race nationalities everything you know what I mean so mm -hmm. how can you not how can you just leave that you know to waste you know, you, get, you just get older and you get the responsibility you're like well. Okay, I can't go to a show on a Thursday night because I have kids and a wife, and yeah. I gotta get up at six o'clock in the morning. Exactly. You know, when you were twenty, you might have had to get up at six o'clock in the morning being you care. Fuck it. You would just drink <laughs> through the night and go. You're like, all right, whatever. Yeah. I'll still get up. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't, I, I stay home. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Who cares? Uh, I dedicated my life to what I do, so you know, there are certain things is like having a family and things like that. For me, for me, that would be very difficult. Mm. Maybe selfish reasons, you know, because my life would have to change. Sure. You know? You're very uh, selfish. Yeah, <laughs> very selfish person. We well, actually, he's unselfish yeah. in the fact that he that he didn't put his family through something that get a family and put them through something yeah. right that unnecessarily because he knew where in his heart they wanted to do it right. Yeah, but for it's, it's, there, you know, I just I do what makes me happy and uh, you know that's what makes me happy. So and it's not for everybody. So you ever want kids though? Uh, yeah, if it happened, it, it happened. I would do what I have to do. Would you like know? to take David home for a week? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, don't, no accidents happen. Uh, <laughs> accidents happen. It will happen. I'll play some good music. I'm a perfect example. Where'd you get those sexy sunglasses? Oh, I got them at Four Eyes. It's been bugging me the whole time. Bugging you? Yeah. Huh? yeah. yeah. 
He wears the, their prescription. Actually, I'm uh, not just trying to. He, be cool. he actually used to go to the. I got to go to the clubs, and he would have the Abaddon glasses on, and yeah, you know, <laughs> club. Nice. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, uh, Benson, we need to, and, uh, dude, you gotta bring. Never mind. Sorry. We need a bottle, <laughs> bottle of Jack out here for the Abaddon thing. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> he, got he got excited. He said, "Venom." We'll bring. We'll bring. We'll bring it up in the news segment. Yeah. We'll bring it okay. back up. Right. We'll bring it back up again. <laughs> so, speaking of Venom and Abaddon, uh, what would you guys consider your most uh, cuddly moment? <laughs> Cuddly. Yeah, just that, just that moment, this introduction here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like coming in here, you know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Good. Yeah. It was, nice. it was fun. Can, can, can you tell me? I like throwing him over the couch. Yeah, when he used fun. to kick me out of his house at four in the morning. Get out! Get out! You know? I'm I'm going to bed. Get the, the fuck out! Morning. Sorry. Should be curse me. <laughs> curse all you want. The internet is uh, filled with it. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> Could you tell me your uh, favorite moment that you ever shared with a cactus? A cactus? I had one in my um, rectum once. That was, that was fucking <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that the wrong place. I think I ate it and it just ended up down there somehow. <laughs> it, it, it was easy going down. It was hard coming out. You know, days, you know what I'm saying? It was like eating a ha uh, habanero pepper. <laughs> it wasn't good. What was your uh, fa uh, favorite 70s sitcom? Favorite? favorite um, Chico uh, and the Man. <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. Looking good. <laughs> What's happening? Maybe. What's oh, happening? Family. I don't know. There's Rerun. Of them. Five Rockets and a Moon. Yeah. Remember that Rerun. one? We interviewed Rerun from Outer Rolls Magazine. No way. Yeah. Fat yeah. Freddy Stubbs. Fred Barry. Yeah. He's, he's died, right? Yeah. yeah. He did die. Yeah. We, I interviewed him probably like less than a year before he died. We were not related to the day. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> died after we interviewed them. Yeah. So yeah. Her, him and Stuart and Thomas were in a headlong collision. I don't, want, I don't mean to scare you, but we've had about five different guests that have died after we've interviewed they were all old. Right, drive safe. Yeah. Yeah. Fred Barrett was one of them. Be careful on the way. Hey, out. wait a minute. Can we take this back? <laughs> well, uh, why don't we take a break right here, and then we can come back for more with Alex and John. <laughs>